Michelangelo's first professional contract was for this statue, the Bacchus, which he carved in the year 1496 at the ripe old age of 21. Now the patron for this sculpture was a very influential man by the name of Cardinal Raffaello Riario. You've probably never heard of Riario, but you probably have heard of his uncle, Pope Sixtus IV, right, whose greatest architectural legacy was the construction of the Sistine Chapel. And the story of how these two men met is actually rather interesting. Okay? Vasari says that when Michelangelo was still a teenager, he was in the habit of carving sculptures in the ancient manner. Okay? In other words, making them look as if they were ancient statues. Then Michelangelo would bury those statues in the ground for three or four months at a time, and then he would dig them up, and then he would sell them on the art market as if they were ancient originals. Okay? In other words, Michelangelo was making knockoffs. And one of these fakes ended up in the collection of this Cardinal Riario, right? who supposedly had it in his collection for quite some time when he discovered that it was fake. The Cardinal asks Michelangelo to do it again. This time, though, he wants a sculpture of Bacchus, of the Roman god of wine. And this is the sculpture that Michelangelo produced for the Cardinal, okay? After about a year, he presented the statue to the Cardinal, and when the Cardinal looked at it, he did something unthinkable, okay? And that was to reject it. And so the question that people in my business have been trying to answer for the last five centuries is why would anyone in their right mind reject a statue by Michelangelo? Now, we have to remember the criteria very beginning of this. The Cardinal wants a sculpture that people will look at and believe is an ancient Roman piece. Right? Now, when you look at this statue, just about everything about it is in fact classical in imagery. Right? It is a depiction of a god, and that was the almost exclusive subject matter of classical sculpture. The figure is nude, because in the ancient Greek and Roman world, nudity was something that was celebrated. The figure is in contraposto, right, which we discussed earlier. It's that classical stance that gives the sculpture a sense of movement. But the one thing that this is not is idealized, right? Classical sculpture had a tendency to idealize its subject matter, right? I call them jokingly the 2% body fat Evian water drinking people, right? You see them all the time with these perfect bodies and these expressionless faces. Well, when you look at Bacchus, he is standing in a classical contrapposto stance, right? All of his weight is on his left leg. The right leg is relaxed, but it should be right next to that left leg, right? Instead, it's a little too far out and a little too far back. That causes his pelvis to jut out, right? And we see that rather unflattering belly on the figure of Bacchus. Left shoulder is supposed to move back, but that left shoulder is swaggering. Right shoulder comes too far forward. His head tilts out and slightly to the left. If I look up like this, and you can almost imagine Bacchus slurring his words because he is clearly drunk, or as my students yell out, hammered, right? Bacchus is clearly hammered and he's not supposed to be because Bacchus is a god and he gives us, thank him, the wonders of fermentation, but he's not supposed to feel the effects. So anyone who saw this statue in the 16th century would say, hey, that's a pretty amazing representation of a man in an advanced state of inebriation, but that's not an ancient Roman statue of Bacchus.